Mrs. Chapman? Present. Mr. DeSalva? Present. Mr. Fowler? Present. Mr. Mellis? Present. Ms. Parker? Present. Um, we have a student here tonight. I'm going to be a brand new student. I know that I've caught you off guard, but would you <laughs> like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Would you like to? Okay, sure. okay. Sure. thank you. Good. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. yeah. I'm Mia. And Mia, what grade are you in? Okay. Enjoy. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Um, so we have uh, some. The first thing I'd like to go over is the addendum. I think we have a copy of the addendum for the um, meeting tonight. So uh, we'll read those then. And then I have some corrections and additions to the agenda. So the first one is on, I think Mr. Fowler provided a, um, a document for everyone for voting lines. Um, we need a voting line and it has been requested on page five. It's number 12D. Page five. 12B3D. And that would be the cheerleading in Megan. And it goes, so it would be after D, the voting line, and after E, the voting line. <coughs> and then 12 on page 6, 12C, number 10. That's at the bottom of the page, and I need the voting line here. So at the bottom of the page. Then I need, okay, so Ron, um, you're asking for a voting line after 11, 13. Okay. Um, so a voting line after 11, a voting line after 13, a voting line after 14, then go to 19G, which is at the bottom page of voting line, and a voting line at 19H. And then on page 8 of 10, number, once again, 12C, number 20, CC, I, I. I'm okay. sorry, II. I, um, Kim Decay, you need a voting line there. And KK, a voting line after KK. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. And then on page um, uh, nine, down, it's under new business at the bottom of the page, number 13. We're, I'm going to. Um, I will amend the resolution when we get there, but um, it should read approve the resolution authorizing the superintendent to discuss possible land purchase or exchange with Kenneth Bridenauer for purposes of future facilities and for your uh, building of new elementary. And then on page number 10, um, E, where it's um, discussion of superintendent interview process. Um, I will give a report out, uh, Mark and I have a report out on the community survey. Then we will um, discuss the overview of the um, interview process, read in the slate of candidates, um, provide you information on the questions that you gave us. Then th there will be a motion to approve the, I'll ask for a motion to approve the candidates, the slate of candidates. And then I will bring, be bringing forth a motion uh, to include Mr. Rosesky and Mrs. Uh, Jody uh, Rager in the second round of interviews for um, input and uh, conceptual expertise. You know, have voting lines after the slate of candidates and after the. Yes, the voting lines motion. after the slate of candidates and after the second motion. So there'll be two motions there with two voting lines. <coughs> and I have that's all I have in case. Is there any other additions or corrections to the agenda? Okay. 
If not, if not hearing any, could I get a motion to approve the agenda as revised? So moved. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mrs. Parker? Yes. Mrs. Chapman? Yes. Thank you. And then um, you receive the minutes of the April 10th meeting. Um, are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? Mr. Fowler had a few corrections. We discussed them today and they're, they've been made. They're just, just minor. small minor. Yeah. And if everything is okay with those corrections being made, could I get a motion to approve? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Parker? Yeah. Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mr. DeSalvo? Yeah. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mrs. Chapman? Yes. And then um, the next on the agenda is approve the minutes from the April 24th special meeting. Um, are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? If not, could I get a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Mayor. Um, um, Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mrs. Chapman? Yes. Mr. DeSalva? Mr. Mellis? Yes. And Mrs. Parker? Yes. Okay, and then we have the uh, minutes from the April 24th planning meeting. Could I get a, are there any additions or corrections to those? Um, and this is a minute. If not, could I get a motion? Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mrs. Parker? Yes. Mr. DeSalvo? Mr. Fowler? Yes. And Mrs. Chapman? Yes. <coughs> and finally, I have a motion uh, to approve the minutes from the May 1st, 2017 special meeting. Are there any additions or corrections to that meeting? If not, can I get a motion to approve? Thank you. Can I have a second, please? A second. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mrs. Chapman? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mrs. Parker? Yes. <coughs> so we have several presentations tonight um, from the Amy and the primary and the special education. Thank you guys for all being here tonight. We have a really big agenda. So if we can limit to about 10 to 12 minutes. That would be all right. No, no problem. <laughs> I just thought, now, Kathy, you don't take everything else. Yeah. Um, but if you want to start with the intermediate school, Mr. Osetsky, you want to do I just want to move first. Good evening, everyone. I'm just going to talk about three different things that are kind of going on at the building. The first thing is our wellness day that we're having on May 23rd. Um, we have some different companies and organizations that are coming to help with our wellness day. We're going to kind of run it like a field day where the kids will visit each station for a little bit of time, about 15 to 20 minutes. We have CrossFit 740 that's coming. Thank you, Mr. Stout, for helping us organize that. We have a karate company coming as well. We have a couple of dental hygienists that are coming. We're going to do something with nutrition, and we also are doing some CPR training, and then fire safety, and some first aid as well. So that's going to be taking place on the 23rd of May. Um, also, on the 22nd, we have Real Eyes. It's a vision care program, and they actually come to the school and do classroom assemblies for 45 minutes about eye care and all that kind of stuff, and that's a free program. So we have them coming on the 22nd as well. Um, the second point I have is our student council. This was our first year kind of bringing the student council back, and just to kind of let you know a couple of the activities that they helped with this year. Um, they helped organize our Spirit Week activities and our Bless the Child activities. Um, they organized the pennies for patients, and then they also did a thing of candy grams for Valentine's Day with the money going to our food pantry, and they raised $175. The kids have donated all the lollipops and the hearts and all that to make them as well, and they actually stayed after school one day to make them as well. So um, this was our first year of doing it. We're going to have student council again next year. And then our last thing is Invention Convention. Mrs. Smith, our fourth grade teacher, organizes that. And this year we sent four kids onto the regional tournaments which have not taken place yet. We have Elena Bell going, Olivia DeSalvo, and then we have a team that's Henry Poisington and Chase Hamilton. So we'll see what happens based on the regional rounds. Two of our kids are going to the nationals. They submitted a video submission and they're actually going to nationals in June. So Henry Poisington and Chase Hamilton are going to Washington, D.C. on June 1st to share their video and also present as well. 
and there are a group of 75 kids from Ohio that were selected to go with a total of 300 kids that are participating. So I think that's a great thing for Bloomfield to be very proud of. So that's the intermediate school. Stephen McCall, say anything about instructional practices? What's going on? Anything new and great? Or? We're continuing to just work on the reading with the LLI piece. There weren't any land sharks that came together for this. No, we were, we were good. <laughs> Yeah, to be older yeah. to understand that, I'm sorry. Your invention convention was really... Um, it was great. They worked very hard. It's a really good, good presentation. Okay, Mrs. Kinsher. All right, so um, again, we are focused on the health and wellness piece as well, because all that was brought back to the building this year, and so we developed a committee and um, worked at talking with our students about the importance of staying healthy and keeping fit. And so we had three walking challenges this year with grade, level, grade levels competing against each other. And then, of course, I had to load up the office with all, you know, the specials. And so everybody would count their steps for the week. And then whoever won, you know, got some uh, celebratory um, items. Uh, it just really has made an impact. I believe there's one little girl that sticks out in my mind. They're all counting their steps. They even had... Uh, over break, they could take home their paper and do their own steps at home and return them. But one little girl actually stated that for Christmas she had asked for a Fitbit so she could track her own steps. So it does work when you immerse it into the building. Um, again, we are culminating, as uh, Mr. Odesky stated, with a health and wellness day. Ours is actually in the morning and it will be Friday. And our students will go through several rotations. Um, a dietitian that will come in and talk about healthy food to eat. We do have um, kids yoga, an instructor that's coming in to do yoga with the kids. Um, a dance uh, session where we have a dance teacher that's going to come in and choreograph and the kids will be doing that. And then to uh, top it off, we have our health and wellness walk and run, which will be held here in, at the field. And um, all students will receive a pedometer that they can take home that was um, donated by Fairfield Medical Center. Um, and each time a child goes around the lap, they get a, like an elastic bracelet that will be slipped on so they will know how many uh, laps they have gone. And then the top two students from each class, whoever had the most laps walking or running, will then get a, a Bloom Carol um, cinch bag. So, and I see classes out walking, like during their breaks, sometimes replacing them instead of brain breaks. And it does prove that learning you know, occurs, it's, it's better at that level if they've gone a brisk walk and then come back in and do their studies. So I've enjoyed that and watching the kids. And then the second event that I'm going just to, to mention is we do have our quarterly um, positive uh, support celebrations. Um, I collect the data through the quarter, identifying maybe some of the behaviors that we need to work on. And I call them like just social manners or social behaviors. So we gather every quarter and we talk about what we're doing right in our building, the caring and helping each other out. And then we talk about maybe areas that we need to improve, maybe listening is a factor. And I, I truly believe that if we can get it laid down here at the foundations of the lowest levels that, that these will be social manners that will follow them all the rest of their lives. So we have a fun time, we make it fun, we sing, we dance, we do skits, we do learning videos, and um, oftentimes recognize students that are just not, just because they have the better grades or anything, but students that really go above and beyond in helping um, their classmates and our learning community. So those are the two events that I wanted to highlight tonight. Any questions about either one? All right, thank you. Thank you. Kathy Hancock is next. Uh, Mrs. Sestito, I see a young gentleman hiding back there, yeah. and he's with Troop 241, I think, yes. and I think he's here to observe tonight. You are more than welcome to come to the front table or to come out behind the, um, <laughs> the trophies the if you'd like. <laughs> he's practicing listening skills by hiding. <laughs> he's practicing listening skills by hiding. So did you get a copy of the agenda? It's, we'll make sure that you get that, and um, we always welcome our scouts, so. Thank you very much. And if I'm not mistaken, we had a student of the month too, right? Yes. 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 Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> so you are the one person that is free anytime during this meeting to say what's going on. Uh, we will be more than glad to um, answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And next up we have a special education team. <laughs> Mark has to help me a little bit. 
Mark has to help with all. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I can just kind of paraphrase that we've had a lot of changes federally, statewide, and um, now some of the stuff is going down to the local level um, for special education um, due to the fact of um, you know a new presidential candidate, the new ESSA that came into effect last year. So there's been a lot of um, changes this year. So I'm just going to, mine is called the State of Affairs of Special Education. Um, I'll just uh, start with the federal level. Uh, federally, there are plans to cut funding for certain programs that may impact states and the flow through money is available. More unfunded mandates that schools have to support, such as track and students who drop out and more early childhood services. And questions as to whether students' health care coverages will decrease, which in turn affects uh, Medicaid reimbursement. So those kind of things, we're still kind of waiting to see what happens with those, but those are, are coming. At the state level, uh, Dr. Sue Zay, who is the director of the Office of Exceptional Ch Children, retired. So right now there's an interim superintendent there. The new parent procedural safeguards were released mid-April, so we have a new whose idea is this. Um, we are supposed to start using it August 1st, but it is on the ODE website now. Um, and it is, uh, they took a lot of the state um, information out and put a lot of the federal information in. So it is instead of 45 pages long, it's about 22 pages long. Um, According to the state, new forms will be rolled out this summer along with multiple professional development opportunities for trainings. I actually went to the OAPSA conference on Friday and I got um, to sit on a committee to look at the new forms. Uh, they're very similar. There's a couple of um, differentiations with the, the testing page and things like that. But I think that the teachers will be uh, find the forms easy to use and easy to roll over from the old forms. So that's, that's a positive. Um, ODE and Office of Exceptional Children is completing audits on certain entities. The East Lake Fairfield Career Center was selected this year as part of this audit. Since we are one of 16 districts that feed into the Career Center, um, we are part of this audit. And I actually go tomorrow to find out the findings from ODE and the Office of Exceptional Children. So as part of that, we have to sit at the table and we have to find out um, what could be action plans for them and develop with them the action plan for our districts. Um, still a thought, the Office of, of Exceptional Children is continuing to consider that uh, and will most likely move forward with some type of le electronic system for compliance and for sharing I IEPs and ETRs across districts statewide. Um, there's a lot of different vendors out there, um, about four or five in this state, so what they're trying to do is have them all talk to each other so we don't wait for a lot of the IEPs and ETRs to get here when kids enroll or come from different entities. Uh, and then new policies have warranted collaboration with the Ohio <coughs> Department of Job and Family Services and Children's Services to develop a streamlined process of collaboration between entities to ensure foster place kids uh, get their needs met. Uh, I'm sitting uh, with Travis and with um, Janice Raver and with Michelle um, Scott on committees to uh, develop policies and procedures for this county. Um, and we actually have a meeting next Monday. And so what's gonna happen from there is hopefully we'll have a draft that we can share with you. Um, and then it's going to, the guidance and procedures will be sent from the county to the state for approval. The one problem is, is Fairfield County could have a fabulous plan, but Franklin County doesn't have to follow the same plan. So we still have to work within those entities. Um, this year we have about 16 foster care uh, kids in our district. Um, about 13 of those 16 come from Franklin County. So we're still trying to collaborate with Frank Franklin County and develop a system with them as well. Um, at the district level, um, we, have, we still have an increase in student uh, special ed population. 
the early childhood population has continued to grow, and, and in order to best serve our preschool population, we're going to have two preschool programs in Bloom Carroll next year, one at the intermediate school and one at Bloom Carroll Primary. This will help to alleviate students going all over the county for service. However, um, I say that, but we will probably still have to place some of the kids in either Liberty Union or Amanda next year. Um, right now, um, currently we have 36 kids in preschool programming. Um, that could be itinerant, speech and language only, as well as classroom service. And we have three kids that I'm actually meeting on in the next two weeks that are in healthy grow that will be moving up. So we are still continuing to grow that number. Uh, a group of our special ed staff will be going to a two-day autism conference in Cleveland in early June. Uh, due to an increase of students who uh, we serve who need autism services, uh, professional development is necessary. And in talking with state um, people, they said this is the best conference in the state. Um, including Ocali, I talked to Ocali. Uh, the one thing that's nice about this is they focus on autism, but they also focus on students that need executive functioning and um, sensory breaks and sensory needs. So it's not just the focus on autism, but it encompasses what executive functioning. Executive functioning is helping kids organize their own space, like time management organization. And we actually um, have a um, uh, we have something that the OTs and speech and language use to teach the kids how to do that. Uh, so my plans for uh, next year are to train teachers and aides in new forms as they roll out, continue to embed a better systemic flow of services and supports between all buildings, continue to assess needs and services we already have for the betterment of students with special needs and the general population, and the motto for this year or next year is understand needs, deliver quality service, exceed expectations, and redefine special education. That is it. So, Kathy, we have a chance to talk. Mm -hmm. and, and there are two questions I think the board needs to understand is, can you and Travis explain to us if we get a child that comes in about mid-year, um, a softer person, uh, either mid-year or at the beginning of the year, how can we get that student work? I know that um, I can answer a little bit of that. When a child comes in and enrolls for foster care from a different district, those some of those flow, flow through monies come from the, the district of residence. So that's part of it, and then Travis can tell us. Yeah, the, um, they look at it twice a year, so we'll look at it at the beginning of the year and then midway through the year. And as Kathy said, the legal district of residence pays the entire student portion because there's no tax dollars changing hands, obviously. From the, from the residential parents. So if it's a regular education student, we would get the full um, state funded amount that changes hands from resident to the educating district. If they're a special needs uh, student, then we would also get the weighted funding that changes hands as well. And the other question, um, Kathy talked about the um, plan for the different counties to put it together. Mm -hmm. And could you, there's two questions on that. Could you um, talk to the board about the same, the statement that you made to me, <clears> that you're looking at what's in the best interest of the child. So if we have a child that's at school, that scenario that you gave me. Mm -hmm. And then also um, the opportunities for board members or community to <clears throat> uh, policies before they become um, ingrained at the state level. Sure. Um, since we're meeting on Monday, the 11th, I figured I would bring back whatever the policy and draft form was to share with you. Um, and then we can look at that before it goes on to the state. And I believe um, Lancaster has also done that and a couple other of uh, the districts in Fairfield County. Um, the other thing too is, this is supposed to be a collaborative effort um, from ESSA, um, Every Student Succeeds Act, which is part of the um, new federal law. And what it does is it's supposed to bring the entities to the table to develop a plan for the kid, not just say, okay, this kid's yours now, here he is. So if a kid is a senior, for instance, and has been at Beechcroft High School since freshman year, I'm just saying that, uh, he has 20 days of school left and somehow he gets foster placed in Bloom Carroll. Are we, are we saying that you know it would be best for him to be at Bloom Carroll when he's been at Beechcroft for ninth through 12th grade? So we have a, a discussion about that. The child usually comes to the table. 
We have children's services that come to the table. Um, so, and then the districts, both the districts come to the table. Columbus would come to the table and we would come to the table and develop a plan for this child. Um, sometimes they'll say, yeah, it's the best interest for him to stay. And then we have a discussion about transportation. Um, sometimes transportation is um, from the home district. Sometimes it could be from the district of where they're foster placed, or sometimes they figure out a combination of those two. But as part of ESSO, we have to figure out a plan that's in the best needs of this child. So the takeaway message from that is that we could potentially have additional um, reimbursement or funding that where the school district wouldn't feel would be required to mm -hmm. pay Correct. the transportation cost for that. <coughs> that's right. That's right. Any other questions? Uh, item 10A, uh, ask for board approval of the April financial statements, total expense $9,381,159.57, uh, including uh, a little over $7.4 million for the first month of uh, the consortium expenses and uh, activity running through the books. Um, of the $7.4 million, uh, a little over 206000 of that are its actual Bloom Carroll activity. So uh, the majority, obviously, is of the other entities, but uh, that's how the activity will run from, from here on out. Uh, if you look at the executive summary, page 28 uh, in the electronic packet, uh, this was uh, April marks the final uh, income tax collection. Uh, they come in quarterly for the fiscal year. This is the first time in the last eight collections that the amount was actually below the forecasted amount. And actually, it was below last year's collection during the same time period. So certainly that signals, in my opinion, a leveling off uh, of the income tax revenue growth uh, that we've experienced for the past uh, uh, two fiscal years. As it was aforementioned, uh, the financial activity for the consortium runs through fund uh, 026, and that's on page three of the yellow report. Um, you can see the various funds here uh, and the activity. Any questions on the uh, April financial statements or the checks written during the month? <clears throat> Mrs. Parker? Yes. Mrs. Chapman? Yes. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mr. Meltz? Yes. Uh, item B, we're uh, very thankful to be able to recognize the following donations to Bloom Carroll School District. Uh, Brian Randalls, Dick Kilbarger, Kelly Abbott, and Amy Milligan uh, have all donated uh, very generously to our recently formed uh, Bloom Carroll Running Club. Uh, so we're certainly very thankful for that. And uh, Mr. Joe Bratton uh, has very generously donated uh, $5,000 both to our high school science department and to our middle school robotics program. And I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the science department was purchasing a 3D printer that was on display at our, our district showcase. And uh, Mrs. Cottle, so it felt like Christmas morning. And, and she was notified of the donation to, to further grow. Uh, what a wonderful program that she uh, has in place and the middle school has in place here. Uh, so we're, again, uh, thank you to all these individuals. Can I get a motion to recognize the donations? So moved. <coughs> Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mr. DeSalva? Thank you. Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mrs. Parker? Yes. And Mrs. Chapman? Yes. Thank you. Uh, item C uh, is the uh, semi annual approval. Uh, it's required by a revised code to be. Uh, for the board to consider approval of the five-year forecast for fiscal year 17 through 21 and subsequently we will submit this to the Ohio Department of Education for approval. Uh, you have the five-year in your packet. Uh, it's page 45 is the prescribed format for the five-year. It gets a little busy and uh, I'd like to kind of summarize it more into an executive summary uh, in terms of if, if we truly just want to take a, a snapshot of, of our financial picture and simplify it down as much as we can uh, then really the executive summary is what we really try to publish and what we try to put into the hands of uh, those individuals uh, who, are, who are in the community and, and want a snapshot of our um, financial picture. The executive summary simply is our beginning cash balance plus our revenue minus our expenses. I mean, it's as basic as it gets. 
and then it shows are we in an operating surplus or are we in an operating deficit. Uh, we've been fortunate enough for the past four fiscal years to be in an operating surplus. We're forecasting that again at the end of this year and next year, uh, state budget alterations notwithstanding. Uh, but, but it is on the horizon here beginning with fiscal 19, 20 and 21 where unless there's some reductions in our expenses or some other increased revenues which we're not, not currently projecting that uh, revenue, expenditures are going to over, overtake revenues which is typical. It's very cyclical in the schools so just want to put that on the board's uh, radar, put on the administration's radar. We've already begun to kind of begin to discuss this in our meetings but uh, this is the executive summary that you know if you're asked and you can really kind of point to um, you know, as, as you look at the financial picture. The, the other uh, aspects of the uh, forecast, and again, this is all prescribed and required by the state of Ohio, are notes. So every single line item in the forecast is backed up by a note, uh, graphs, and some uh, explanations here uh, in, the, in the subsequent pages of the forecast. So if there's a, a trend here, we, we show the last five years uh, of actual, so this is our real estate tax uh, note. I'll show the last five years uh, of changes and then what we're projecting in the five year going forward. If there are significant fluctuations up or down, then it should be explained um, in, in the note. So if you go through here and you're not quite sure why there's a fluctuation up or down, then you would just go back, find the note, and it should be explained. Uh, it should be explained in here. Well, this is again just the over time the expenditures just increasing at a rate higher than revenues, which is typical. Uh, the uh, the last page shows you again uh, just so we're not just throwing numbers out and, and for a sense of accountability. How does this compare to our forecast for the same fiscal year that we followed in October? Uh, we've talked about the differences and why there are differences. The, the revenues are higher uh, with the various taxes and our purchase services. We've talked about this all year and Kathy hit on the, the preschool special education population are also higher. It, it just happens to be that the overall total is, is close, uh, but there were significant fluctuations in revenues and expenditures. Any questions on the forecast? Certainly we can go over this in more detail at a future planning session, uh, but this just allows us to uh, comply with the legal requirement for May finally. And Travis, that will be posted in this. Yes. Can you find out more of what they can say specifically what gain cap means on the days? Yeah, the gain caps are uh, what's implemented by the uh, budget, the biennial okay. budget. So if if we were able to run through the uh, formula, then our state revenue would be much higher. But to make it fit with any appropriation, they assign these arbitrary gain caps. So you can only gain 5%. 5.5 percent based on the house version and, and that's what those are <clears throat> so the way things are looking i mean just because i've heard about this in the paper today and it's fast about the about the uh, legislature not sure about cuts to education so have you got any details i'm not <clears throat> Yeah, the emails are just the, the house version of the gain cap is 5.5%. And that's really the, the biggest number for us because none of the other cuts impact us because we're already on the on the cap. <clears throat> so is that what folks are predicting the worst case scenario? Yeah, I think I think that it's, it'll fall somewhere in that five percent range. That's what so we've been you're telling me you're not concerned. I don't know about not concerned, but uh, <laughs> Sorry, I feel pretty confident right now that we're okay. nah, confident right now. Okay. Um, did I get a motion to approve the five-year Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. 
Mrs. Parker? Yes. And Mrs. Chapman? Yes. Item D, uh, we looked at this at our planning session, but uh, we have the capital expenditures budget for fiscal 18. Um, we, we've left some, that's uh, on page 64, the electronic copy. We've left some leeway in this budget for a couple of things. One is our high school roof. Uh, just not sure where we are right now in our, uh, with the state assessment of the high school and, and kind of how we want to look at that. So everything else we had already kind of discussed uh, with our uh, technology budget here. Uh, proven roughly $191,000 and again this is just simply the capital expenditures budget at this time we're not considering adding staff and looking at staffing right now so there are some staffing items on here but this is just simply the capital expenditures um, some of the other things that we're looking at are just more of a follow-up from projects that we've had in the past we're continuing our replacement of lockers in the high school um, high school parking lot uh, just some uh, minor maintenance there uh, this is phase two of the stadium entrance project. Uh, that's the majority of that cost is just paving. Uh, as we got, we've talked about when we got rid of the old concession stand, we were looking at a new storage shed uh, at the stadium that will help both music boosters and athletic boosters. Um, we are in desperate need of an, a third van um, for routing and for trips. Um, the high school, we we're looking at, we continue to add 30-unit uh, lap, laptop carts. Uh, Mr. Millis had brought to our attention about air conditioning in the classrooms earlier this year. We're trying to continue that. Um, I remember being there was only that one air Yeah. Um, so as you look here again, we've got an improved items of about 345000 again. On the forecast, there's roughly 700000 in there. So as we kind of look at our roof, as we approach, look at the IT plan, we, we've still got some flexibility, but if we can get this approved tonight, at least we can move forward with the projects that are uh, that are before you tonight. <clears throat> Any questions on the, the project list? So, Travis, you do have some personal on here, but at this point in time, right. I'm not considering it. No. The curriculum items are approved as well. Those, those were... So the the level of literacy reading grade yes. <clears throat> Miss, Mrs. Chapman? Yes. Mrs. Parker? Yes. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. And Mr. Mills? Yes. Uh, item E is a fund to fund transfer from general fund to debt service fund, $7,492.50. Uh, this is to pay our semi annual energy conservation debt payment based on savings uh, in, in our general fund. <clears throat> so moved. Fowler? Yes. Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mrs. Parker? Yes. Ms. Chapman? Yes. And finally, we, uh, as we, again, not to keep going back here, but as we took over the fiscal agent of the consortium, we have two funds that we need to get approved for just to be able to make expenditures. This is just appropriations to get us through <coughs> June. Um, the actual 026 fund, 20 million, and then the funds that come back to us as acting fiscal agent of 18,000. I gave you a little more breakdown of how the 18,000 was probably be spent, uh, but I don't foresee us spending all 18,000 the rest of this fiscal year. So again, this just gets us to where we can make legal expenditures from these new funds. <clears throat> can I just ask a question on that? So with this, you know, us taking this over and everything, so if we need a signature authority or something like that, really, just like if you have an expense or you have to pay it, who it's it's myself and the chairperson, superintendent, of Vern Union, okay, Richard so Spindler. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and how often do you guys meet to do these allocations? We meet, we meet quarterly. We meet quarterly. Mm -hmm. So if you have, I'm going to make up a number, six hundred thousand dollars worth of medical expenses or additional premiums that you have to pay, you're just paying. It, we're self-insured, so you're paying the actual claims. Actually, we're paying the claims for each entity, and it. And there's a running balance for each entity as they bring premiums in and pay claims. 
And if they over exceed the premium again? There's a formula that they, it's a catch up provision. Just the same as if the premiums coming in what far, far exceed, then you're eligible for premium moratoriums and things like that. And that's what we do on yes. in June and December. Yes. Also. Yes. So one school district was having a much higher number than usual. Then what happened? They would have to make it up partly, but also the uh, protection of being in a consortium is that the other districts are able to help them get through just the same as if it's it's cyclical so it goes both ways <clears throat> and then just one more question mm -hmm. about our, our, at this board's liability so if the, this appropriation and this what we're doing goes to hell and the rest goes to Simpson what's the board this board's liability there's no liability the, the, the SCOIC is a separate legal entity it's audited Separately, it's does that leave us open for additional audits? Though? Yeah, I mean, they'll they'll be here to audit the consortium separately. But the O twenty six fund is literally an in and out. It's just an accounting mechanism that's completely separate of our our general taxpayer fund. <clears throat> and it's something that kind of rotates around. Yeah, it's it's going to be with us for a while. I have a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> And again, we assume this because of the there was an unexpected death of the current budget. Mm -hmm. So, did I get a motion to approve the thought that appropriations is presented for OS OC OIS? Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mrs. Parker? Yes. Mrs. Chapman? Moving on to old business, we um, have a, a list of four years of our um, the motion is to approve the following policies of the estate <coughs> on three tiers um, allowing room for a second reading. Are there any additions or corrections or any questions that we have about these policies? If not, are there motion to approve? So moved. second, please? Ms. Parker? Yes. Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mrs. Chapman? Yes. Uh, thank you. Yes. Um, so the next on the agenda is the discussion of the district technology plan. And um, I don't know how many of you have brought it or are ready to discuss it, but um, I asked to have this put on because I think that um, there's a, a, this is a very well written plan. Um, I think it wants to put a lot of thought into it among committee members. And I would like to, um, some of this is going to be contingent on us passing a, a bond levy or something like that. But since we're in a transition um, between uh, superintendents, I'd really like to delay accepting a final approval of the plan until after the superintendent on board and get their input about that um, communication to us. So if everybody's in agreement, we don't have to take any action on it, but um, if you want to discuss it tonight, it's more than one, but I'd really like to. Um, Boy Scout report. I'll let you <coughs> look at mine, and if not, if we have interest, I can get that for you. But that shows how we try to look in advance and do uh, some type of planning for the district that takes about a couple years or so. Um, do you want to see some more report recommendations? Really, just a couple of quick things this evening. Uh, last Monday, met with the senior support services. Working on the end of the year things, uh, not both groups. Uh, John working with the Christmas Signal Group and maybe some uh, getting things ready to wrap up the school year and then uh, transitioning for the summer and making those plans. Uh, we had district leadership team last week, and again, that's when we brought 19 people together from uh, various uh, aspects of the district and, and again, defined and submitted those. Uh, summer plans to make sure everybody's on the same page. And then tomorrow we get the administrative meetings, the superintendents and directors. 
So we really are in the midst of wrapping everything up for the for the year. And I was told today 13 more days of school. I don't think that's all. <laughs> I, I quit counting in 1989 or 90, but. So now we can do the, um, are we on uh, the agenda the post education day with the district secretary for this? We are not. Uh, PD day for next year. The PD day next year is right now is being hosted at Amanda Claire Creek. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like the PD is here, the decision is going to move it around, but they're sort of in flux down there, so it could be right back here, it could be you know where, but we're going to host it, that's for sure. Um, the other one other quick thing, I guess, uh, the PDQ, which is the quarterly uh, policy document arrived. Day, yesterday from uh, OFDA. So we will need to get a policy meeting set and uh, we'll get that done to figure out what the board is and launch those uh, policies and some product and so on. Can we look at that before market market Friday? No, that's good enough for us. Okay, we should get a couple of days. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on to uh, student. Students and programs. Number one, recognize the second semester students of the month. Uh, for January, Griffin Dozer, Kate Miami, Christian Kenna, Kaylee Gray, for February, Mia Phillips, Lisa Fredson, Matthew Denny, Joseph Fields. March, Monica Conway, Katie Sestigo, Vincent Tyfield, Morgan O'Connor. April, Charles McKeever, Evan Perry, Brady Johnson, Chase Allen. And May, Kayla Williams, Tom Miller, Anna Tyler, and Michael Phillips. So again, congratulations to the student who was here this evening and all of the students that were recognized earlier. We also had our uh, annual National Honor Society induction uh, recently on April the 24th. There were three seniors inducted in the National Honor Society, Levi Buffington, Kayla Treitmeyer, and Cooper Best. And then a number of juniors, Ethan Brewer, Benson Burner, Mackenzie Butler, Amanda Cordray, Kyla Gozer, Natalie Detweiler, Ross Eggleston, Darren Cox, Kayla Henry, Anna Cruz, Grace Locke, Grant Locke, Lauren Lund, Lauren Moore, Cameron Payne, Terry Ridenow, Bailey Russell, Logan Schmidt, Lacey Sorrell, Lydia Taylor, Lily Tyler, Lily Daugherty, Logan Willis, Really congratulations to all of those students. Uh, great honor to be inducted into the National Honor Society. Next, you have uh, as a group of all of our closings and our camps. Number three, approve the following summer camps and closures for 2017, which include overnight trips that's included in bold, uh, tends to be accompanied by the respective coaches and parent chaperones for overnight trips, pending mandated background checks for volunteers. And A, you have to wear the passing ball. Into Ohio University, B, uh, to soccer into Strongsville to do the showcase, C, football in here, D, e, cheerleading uh, for the Andy Dennison University, and that's about it. Now. I have a motion to approve the camps as outlined. So moved. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mrs. Chapman? Yes. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mrs. Parker? Yes. And we have letter E Zero Spax to Bowl going to uh, Louisville University. So I may be mistaken, but help me. So why are we going out state? Or are we going out state? Because it is in state. I'm wondering about that too. I thought that might be interesting. It's an in state. Um, could I get a motion to approve uh, the two basketball camps? So moved. Um, and one. And I second. Second. Thank you, Dan. And could I get a motion? Or could I get a motion? Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mr. DeSalva? Yes. Mr. Fowler? No. Mrs. Parker? No. And Mrs. Chapman? Yes, but I am going to ask um, because these are camps and again, there's no reason to disclose what I'm just asking um, Ms. Avery. Uh, not opposed to the camp whatsoever. Thank you. 
Moving on with the rest of the camps, so the rules, soccer, um, the state of driving, volleyball, uh, um, again, located here, wrestling, uh, also here, and when the gym closes, we'll be finishing July 18th and 23rd uh, for the middle school, and uh, then finishing the 23rd for the high school. Number four, approved the following 2017 2018 student parent handbooks for the high school, middle school, elementary school, and primary school. Number five, approved the dates of May 6th through the 19th, 2018, uh, for the middle school in Washington, D.C. trip. Number six, approved the attendance of approximately 17 upper high schools of Ohio, upper high school in Jackson, Ohio, June 5 through 9. And number seven, approved the attendance of approximately eight students at Ohio Leadership Council in June 23rd through 26th. We will bring the full list back to you uh, at the June meeting. Discussion. Go ahead and get to those folks. Do you have any motions to approve? So moved. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mrs. Parker? Yes. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mr. Mellis? Yes. yes. Mrs. Chapman? Yes. I just need one second um, before I go on to the third. Thank you. Uh, I know the board members and I apologize for the clarification. Um, um, sure. Moving on to C personnel and employment. Number one, approved substitute teacher list number 10, May 2017, as scheduled by the Hertford County ESC. Number two, approved the voluntary transfer of Chris Dykes from seventh grade math to sixth grade science um, for next year, and that's to fill the vacancy created by retirement and a resolution of Kathy Miller. Number three, approved the voluntary transfer of Leah Dawkins from kindergarten teacher to first grade teacher uh, for next school year. And that's pending the acceptance of the resignation of Amy Shelley. Number four, approved moving part time 26 7 intervention teacher Melissa Diamond of the Intermediate School uh, to full time position due to injury and of special education to meet special needs school year. Number five, approved increasing four nights high school biology teacher Dana Reeves to five nights. Uh, due to increased student volume pressure uh, for next school year. Approved the employment of Laura Dobbins, primary uh, school intervention teacher on the one year initial sequence under the contract for 2017 2018 school year. As a reminder to the board, that position will create additional number of employees uh, due to the increased number of students we had on IEPs. Number seven, approved the request for conversion of Malibu for transfer placement on Case Hill from Bachelor's to Bachelor's School University. Pursuant to a receipt of official transfer. <coughs> Number eight, approved the voluntary transfer of Molly Foster from primary school aid to primary school library aid, effective with uh, 2017 2018 school year, and that's to fill the vacancy created by the resignation of Will Talon. Number nine, approved the employment of Randy Brooks, full time aid at primary school, one year limited contract set three, effective with 2017 2018 school year, pending approval of agenda item C. Transfer, voluntary transfer of Molly Foster. Number 10, we submit agenda item 10C12 from the February 13, 2017 agenda. And that was Kristen Holmes' voluntary transfer, and she's going to remain in her current assignment as a special education leader at the library at the primary school. Before I get a motion, I have a motion to approve the um, Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Ms. Parker? Yes. Mrs. Chatton? Yes. <coughs> Number 11, approved by Linda Mellis, long term substitute uh, teacher Travis Rucker, effective April 10, 2017, to May 25, 2017. Do we have any motion to Sure. Mrs. Chapman? Yes. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mr. Fowler? No. Mr. Mellis? Yes. And Mrs. Parker? Yes. 
Number 12 approves Sarah Woodings substitute teacher for program and summer school program. Number 13 approves Jeffrey Booth as substitute bus driver for the remainder of the 2016 2017 school year pending verifications and uh, successful background check. We have a motion to approve number 12 and 13. So moved. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mrs. Parker? Yes. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mrs. Chapman? Yes. Number 14 approved the disciplinary uh, agreement between the Greenfield Board of Education and the Greenfield Education Association. Is that the correct one? I have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Can I have a question? Since this is clearly a violation of ODE's professional licensure principle six, the question I have is so we re resolve this agreement, there will be no notification or reporting to ODE. So it's not a violation. Our legal counsel has advised us that this will be anything from a one day non reporting suspension up to a five year ODE suspension if it's handled at the local level, but it's not a reportable offense. Except this occurred with students, so it goes from one year to Five years. It's not for one day. Well, I'm not a legal counsel, but I'll just tell you what our legal counsel said. So if you'd like further time, I would be happy to have a question. Additional um, questions, or um, if this is um, the pleasure of the board and entertained any executive session that we would come to the board. Or you can glance through the code of conduct here. My understanding is that it may be at a local level. <clears throat> as long as it falls in the parameters of what ODE's guidelines are. So am I hearing um, from the board that we need to um, go into executive session to discuss this? I don't think we do if it's been deemed by a legal counsel that that's put forth as accurate and, and clear and legal. So I'm going to, I'm going to make a motion. Um, oh, we've got a motion and a second one. I've got a motion and a second one. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. Um, Mark and Dan, if they, um, could I get a roll call, please? Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mr. Fowler? No. Mrs. Parker? Yes. And Mrs. Chapman? Yes. Uh, moving on to number 15, approve the following request for unpaid leave and operating. We have three, Charlotte O'Donnell, one half day on April 3rd, Lily Randall, one day on April 21st, and Stephanie Densmore on May 12th. Number 16 approves the following personnel to provide extended school year services for Wendy Harris, Dr. Wendy Stevens during the summer of 2017, and then also for 2017-2018 school year. There are four there, Rachel Woodcraft, Speech and Language, and Candace Tudor. Sarah Woody, the teacher, and Elizabeth Franco, the teacher. And just for clarification for the board, we we approved these in advance, um, not knowing necessarily what would come up. Um, we do occasionally have some students that qualify for extended year services, and so we have people in place in advance to go ahead and work those. Number 17, approved the following athletic supplemental contracts for 2017. 2018 school year pending the final CDL verification and background check. We have Mark Williams for varsity boys and girls. Uh, number 18 approved meeting Elise Ballerini, assistant varsity track coach from Group C, Step 2, Group C, Step 7 uh, for 2016 2017 school year. And uh, we did receive preview uh, verification from the station attorneys. Number 19 approved the following extended service days for the 2017 2018 school year as submitted A through G and we have voting on it. So did we get a letter from Ben Moore saying he wasn't going to coach? I was going to have him. I thought we got an equipment. I didn't know that. Yeah, and since they want year to year, when they lose the option. I remember that part because it's also the option. That's not unusual. I have a motion to approve the extended days as submitted and the other items <coughs> as presented. Second that and 
Mrs. Parker? Yeah. Mrs. Chapman? Yeah. Mr. DeSalvo? Yeah. Mr. Fowler? Uh, yes. Mr. Mellis? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, moving on to H, uh, extended day for Rick Dalton for high school guidance. And if you have a ready one, please. Bring the motion to approve to submit it. I'll use that motion. I second. Okay. And quickly. The reason why I asked for the voting lines of 19H and 20HAJKK, as well as number 11 on page 7, was just because of my opposition to the use of the retiree hire without posting the position. Is that when you say the retiree hire? It was after. It wasn't have a voting line before Sarsfield. Before Sarsfield, okay. Thank you, Ron. Mrs. Chatton? Thank you. Mr. Mills? Yes. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mr. Fowler? No. Mrs. Parker? Yes. Moving on to page eight. I won't read all of these, but approve the following one year afternoon supplemental contracts for the 2017 2018 school year as submitted. And we have A through II in the voting line. Is there a motion to approve, please? So Mr. Mills? Yes. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mrs. Parker? Yes. Mrs. Chapman? Yes. Okay, and we have JJ and KK uh, on Sarsfield for those two that are voting on. Mr. Mills, Mr. Fowler, Mr. Chapman, Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mrs. Chapman? Yes. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mr. Fowler? No. And Mrs. Parker? Yes. Now, pulling from your agenda, we will also have an LL and Ingle and Amy Dodger that will go on this next batch. And then we have number 21, approve the following academic supplemental. Uh, Volunteers performing the 17 2018 school year for the time to receive Max Consillo for assistant uh, band, uh, marching band assistant. Number 22, approved the following volunteers for 2016 2017 school year ending the successful background checks. So we have a uh, list of UA volunteers in the packet. And then if you go to your uh, addendum, we have three more items before we get to the voting line. And we have we have gone through uh, three sets of interviews and uh so we have a new assistant principal uh, recommendation for the middle school scott would you want to just introduce yourself real quick sure uh, my name is scott matchett uh, about 20 years in education between uh, lancaster city schools and Harrison union uh, high school um, I've taught social studies. I've been a dean of students at Lancaster High School for the last seven years, uh, dealing with the English language arts department uh, and anything else that we deal with in the administration. So I'm very excited to be here. Uh, I'm excited to join the Blue Carroll uh, schools and community. Okay, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, we met your daughter earlier. Are yes, this is my daughter, uh, Mia. My wife, Michelle, is the Fairfield County uh, attendance officer uh, at ESC. I have a son, Evan, as well. Uh, he's at one of the supporting areas. So number 23, <coughs> Scott Matches, assistant principal. That'll be on a two-year, 215-day administrative contract at step seven. That'll become effective August 1st of 2017. And number 24, approve the addition of one new senior girls varsity golf coach for the 2017-2018 school year, pending approval of another new three CBA. Uh, this will be the first time we've had enough girls to do a girls golf team, which is a uh, really neat thing. So uh, we'll get stuck with DCA and get that MOD one. Uh, number 25, approved the appointment of Thomas Anderson as the 2017, as a uh, 2017 summer custodian. Thomas is running with us several summers now, so we'll get a better one. Any questions, please? Thank you, Thomas. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mrs. Chapman? Yes. 
Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mr. Mellis? Yes. Ms. Spark? Yes. Moving on to contracts and agreements on the long term of college credit plus memorandum of understanding for the wound care over the pocket college for the 2017 and 2022 year. Number two, approve an agreement with uh, Marcus Moon Travel for touring, travel, and lodging services for the 2018 middle school of Washington, D.C. trip. Number three, approve an agreement with Clarefield County and ESC Center um, for employment of the following personnel for the 2017 2018 school year as submitted. And we have a motion. Ms. Parker? Yes. Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mr. DeSalva? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mrs. Chatham? Yes. Do you and your daughter are more than welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting, or you are more than welcome? Good. To, Good to, to, to go to <laughs> this morning about a few like I okay. I, I, I would have those earlier right now. Mr. Cicito, I'd like to excuse you also, but this is a Boy Scout requirement, so you have to hang in there for a few minutes if that's okay. All right. Um, yeah, nothing under weather tonight. And under F, personnel resignations and retirements. Um, number one, accept the resignation of Brian Scott Barkov, the high school intervention teacher effective uh, May 26, 2017. Uh, number two, accept the resignation of Amy Sharp, first grade teacher effective May 26, 2017. And number three, accept the resignation of Amy Dura, activities coordinator, department secretary effective May 18, 2017. And of course, we'd like to thank all three of these individuals, they are great people who have touched a lot of lives here, some in shorter times than others, but um, it's a fine group to have, and we wish them the best of luck. I just want to encourage this also to <coughs> speak to this for a short time. It's also so good for our children to see some of those Okay, um, I will make the motion to accept the resignations again with um, gratitude and um, thankfulness. Second. Mrs. Chapman? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mr. DeSava? With appreciation, yes. Mr. Mellis? And with appreciation, yes. Ms. Parker? Yes. <clears throat> I, yeah, I mean, I can do the first one here on the honor rules. When we uh, updated the honor rules policy uh, in the last two meetings, the honor roll actually reads uh, grades four to um, twelve. We're asking the board to approve just a simple amendment to the um, policy on the one read to include grades three through twelve. Congratulations, Bill. And then, um, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, the, the next thing I'm going to do with this is approve the resolution authorizing the uh, school district to apply for active planning process with the Ohio School Facilities Assistance Program. That does simply lock us in and, and puts them on notice officially that we are interested in pursuing um, the OFCC program. It puts us in the queue. Um, whatever that means, and we certainly talked about that over and over and over. Supposedly, in the summer of 19, we should be in the hopper. And uh, again, I think there's still some confusion. But all this does is ask the board to agree that we are going to officially uh, take some sort of action to move forward with the building process. And then, um, C is from our planning meeting to approve a resolution authorizing the superintendent to discuss the possible land purchase or exchange of Penny Ride now for the purpose of future building. Mrs. Chapman? Yes. Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Ms. Parker? Yes. Okay, moving on to the next one. Um, this is a discussion of the enrollment projections for from the Ohio School Facilities Commission. Yeah, I can just real quickly. I 
we, we presented this at the last planning session. There is technically uh, an appeal process if the board would like to undertake that. However, after speaking with the architect, it's not really an exercise that would find very beneficial at this time. It might affect it two or three students one way, maybe five or ten. And plus they will do another enrollment projection when we get into the CFAP, if in so fact we will get there. So when right. we get in, they will do another right. enrollment. So our suggestion is to just accept the uh, enrollment and we can bring it back in the June meeting for official approval, but uh, to not go through any type of appeal process at this time. Questions or concerns? So the next on the agenda is the um, superintendent search. And I've got more paper for you. If you have more trees. Um, and I will explain what we, we've got. And the first thing I wanted to um, go over with you is that you're aware that we had the community survey out there that survey yeah. closed at midnight last night. And the first thing in your packet is a completed survey. And Mark, if I don't, and Jody, if I don't explain this right, will you um, jump in for me? If you remember, there were four questions on the survey, and what we asked um, uh, Mark and Jody to do was to give you the responses breakdown. Um, if you, uh, there were a total of 223 responses. If you go to the page three of five, um, that's the breakdown and of the um, the question that we asked was. What would you like to see in the superintendent? Um, so these are uh, qualities that the community believes are important for us to look at. Um, the, you'll see the, the, the top five uh, responses are uh, question uh, number one, two, three, uh, number five, and then if you skip down to an innovative leader with growth mindset that promotes 21st century learning opportunities. Then the next question, question three, was provide one question that you would like to ask our superintendent during the interview process. We will be using these um, questions, some of these questions, obviously. Uh, we had 100 and, I think it was 129 um, submitted to us. We will pull some of these out for the district, uh, the night of the community forum with the final two candidates. Um, and use those in our form. Um, and Mrs. Cheese has graciously um, agreed to be the moderator for that, and um, Jody and Steve will participate in handling um, some of the questions <coughs> asked. And then I think if you um, will look at these also, there's some things I think that are things that I would like to look at or discuss um, as we move on to um, bringing these, the new superintendent on, and then you know, what they're going to look at in the first phase. So, um, we will make this available to the community after we get our, um, after we've used it for our process. Uh, I also, with um, the the community support or the community forum, um, I think Joe, you talked to Mark already about this getting feedback. Have you talked to yeah. Mark yet? Okay. Oh, I don't want to surprise you. Yeah. yeah, no, not Mark Thomas. That Mark, Mark Thomas. So um, one of the things that we're going to do for the community forum is um, the questions that we ask. We're also going to ask um, the community to kind of rank the um, how they felt that the people did on their questions, and we will get an immediate response from that. We'll have iPads available so that they can um, do the ranking, and then when we go into discussions, we'll have some input from the community um, to at least see what the community felt of the, of the two candidates. The third, uh, the fourth question that we have is this. This was kind of open-ended, and anytime you have open-ended, it gets you um, lots of, of good things and lots of things of, of concern, or you know, opportunities for improvement. So there are um, question four are additional comments and suggestions, and I think there's some time, some things to follow up on. Um, if I'd like to direct you down to 16, um, do, you, uh, do you think that sports practices should be over by 633 so students can have time to do their homework? Um, you know, some different expectations. I'd like you to notice that number one um, is the last response that was reported, and that was reported at 1052 last night. Uh, we also have the ability to drill down to whether the responses came from, we can't say whether they came from, who they came from, we don't know that. But we can drill down to say, if you want to know about question, for instance, 22, we can tell you whether that came from a community member, a parent, a faculty, staff, student, or other. 
Um, so if you'd like to review these and if you have questions or concerns, we'd like to talk about that at one of our planning sessions. And I'd like to thank Mark and um, Jody for putting this together and getting it out. I think it was a, um, I was, I didn't think we did that many results. So the other thing I have in your packet is a purple um, document. We're going to be handling um, the candidates when they come in um, for the interview, our mission statement, and also our Board of Education 2017 goals. So uh, we only copied, I think, uh, we copied the community, we copied both sides. I don't know what you mean. Uh, you don't, the pur is the purple one in there? It's on the it's in, No, it, I didn't call it in purple. Oh, you didn't it color it in purple. In I'm sorry, oh. it's always on our packets, our agenda yeah, packets. Purple. Purple. Oh. No, the, uh, it looks like this. The it's, it's in the yeah. packet and it says, it's a white and it says vision statement, oh, mission the statement. The right. the it's always on the board of packets. Board. So we are going to be giving um, the candidates this document before. So the next thing that's in your um, packet is, uh, again, I put a the map in of the who, what, where, when, and why, um, where we start. Um, so uh, the interview process will start um, May the 10th with the first three candidates, and I'll read their candidates' names here in just a minute. Uh, and then we'll have a, another meeting on May the 11th. Um, we're going, we have to start at 6 o'clock, we call the meeting, and then we go into executive session for the interview process. And uh, for this, uh, the 10th and the 11th, Jody and Steve, um, are going to uh, be here as well. I'm just going to make sure that you have to talk to Steve yet, but uh, to welcome candidates, and it, it will be here in the middle school um, office with the large conference room. And so, uh, so for those, um, again, the map is in here, and then our um, process or what we put forth in front of you is I took all of the candidates, all of your input related to the questions. To remind you, we will have just a little over an hour and 15 minutes with each candidate. So with each candidate, um, we'll have a, a, um, about an hour and 15 minutes. So if you take you know, two to three minutes to welcome the person and introduce ourselves, and then 10 minutes for them to wrap up, that gives us about an hour um, for the candidates. So we put forth, um, I put forth page one through four of questions. Um, we. Some of them have two questions in it. So, uh, for instance, um, there's a question that uh, the second the question is what is it's got two parts to that question. That grabs um, questions that every that, that board members have asked to be asked. So um, you'll see some combined questions. There's no way that we could ask. Um, as many questions as were on the sheet of paper, so we divided some up to the second interview. Um, then the yellow document that's in, um, I asked Jody to put together um, a, this is a sheet that will also be included, but if you see underneath candidates answer, we've also got some hints to what they should be asked or what they should be addressing. I'm not familiar with um, as much as curriculum, and so I wanted to have, how do I know whether they're a one, two, or three, if it's an area that I'm not, um, uh, I'm not an expert in. So on the questions that are more academic in nature or around how a school operates, um, we're gonna put in some buzzwords for you to use if you find this helpful. Um, so the yellow sheet would be something that Jody and I'll finish putting together tomorrow morning and, and Mark's input. Um, and to help you look at, um, you know, how you reject this question. So we're proposing that if it's okay with you guys tonight, that this would be the interview um, assessment that we'll be using for the candidates tomorrow, tomorrow evening. And if there's something that you ask me, Wednesday. Or, I'm sorry, Wednesday, I'm a day ahead, I'm really, I apologize. Um, <clears throat> so if we, um, this would give consistency with each candidate. Um, you will get a packet that would have the interview questions in. If you want to review these this evening, if you absolutely say, I've got to have another question in there, if you will get that to me tonight or tomorrow morning by 9 o'clock, we can adjust the question. Um, but I'd like to have everything put together by noon tomorrow so that we can get copies made and put together for you before anyone. <coughs> Questions, concerns, suggestions? Okay, the slate of candidates that we will be um, 
if I don't hear from you, then I'm gonna I'm gonna make the assumption that um, this um, document is okay with you, and you know we'll get those made up. We're asking you to bring your um, Canada application packets that you all receive. Um, I would again um, maybe encourage you. I reread the applications again today and highlighted some things that I picked out that you know I, I thought that I wanted to make sure that I was aware of. Um, but if you'll bring your packets that you received, um, the, as you are aware, we received applicants' applications from nine candidates. We um, we did a first go round. Mark and I reviewed the candidates, gave you guys a spreadsheet. Um, the rest of the board uh, reviewed the candidates, and then. Uh, we will be interviewing five candidates. Um, the first candidate is Mr. Sean Hahn, who's currently employed at Boone Carroll as our high school principal. He has previous interim uh, superintendent of experience for the district. The second applicant that we'll be interviewing, um, this is on, um, Mr. Hahn will be interviewing on May the 10th at 615. Um, Kimberly Halley will be interviewing, interviewing on May the 10th at 9 p.m. And then she is a senior consultant at the ESC for Franklin County right now. Previously, she was the academic officer and assistant superintendent for Hilliard City Schools. The third candidate is Zach Howard. Zach will be interviewing May the 11th at 615. Um, he's currently at the Christian School District as director of assessment and accountability, and he is the principal for Central High School. The fourth candidate is Mr. Robert Trumbull. Um, he is currently the superintendent for Fairbanks Local School District at Milford Center. Yeah, he will be interviewing on the 11th at 7.30. And our final candidate is Mr. Carl Thielman. He is currently the superintendent at Tri River Career Center in Marion, and he was previously a superintendent for Shelby City Schools in Shelby, Ohio. Um, he will be interviewing on May 10th at 7.30. Um, could I get a motion to accept the candidates as uh, presented for interviews? So moved. Thank you, and may I get a second, please? Second. And Chad, this is yours, please. Mr. DeSalvo? Yes. Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mrs. Parker? Yes. Mrs. Chatman? Yes. Um, also, because we're going to be in kind of a, it's going to be a long evening, um, the first night, and probably a long evening on the second evening, um, we're, I'm going to bring in some kind of salad, snack, sandwiches, or whatever. Um, if you would let um, Mr. Or let Travis know um, what you'd like. I think you can get it from Subway, and we'll just have something here for you. Um, again, the evening will begin at 6 p.m. Um, with we'll go call into the board um, promotion, and then we will move into executive sessions for interviews. The second motion I would like to bring to you is um, I'd like to uh, make a motion to include um, Jody Leininger and Mr. Vasilski in the second round of interviews to observe and provide educational expertise and input to the board prior to member discussing candidate, selecting a candidate um, for final consideration. And I will make that motion, and if I could get a second for a discussion. I have a second for discussion. Okay, could I get a second for the second. motion? Thank you. Second. And could I get a, if there's any discussion? Thank you. Will they ask questions? Uh, I, no, I think they will observe and provide educational expertise and input. Yeah, my only concern was I know there's research one way or another that says whether to ask questions if it's helpful or beneficial. Most of the research says you don't gain that much from it and it could cost future you know, students amongst the staff. But I don't have it. And if I vote no, it's not in deference of what people have been asking for. Um, any other discussion? Well, I guess in my case, just, just the fact that, you know, even I, I think this case is pretty good about 15, and it may go through and get some more education. I picked up some of the art, but I'm still sure there's plenty of things that, you know, all these years of office tomorrow and say what's new, there would be new things. I, she didn't tell me last year, I don't know about now. So I would, I would find the, the ones that we will have to be done uh, interviewing them. Any other? Mrs. Chapman? <clears throat> Mr. DeSaba? Yes. Mr. Fowler? No. Mr. Mellis? Yes. Mrs. Parker? No. Thank you. 
Um, next on the agenda is board education liaison and updates. Uh, facilities management and transportation. I don't have anything. Nothing from um, Mr. Fowler. Personal labor and management. And we're going, he's got wording to get to them. And we're going, that would be Brock versus the Green. And we'll be able to go, we'll be able to talk about it before. Media communication and community relations. I'm deferring to you. Any updates? We got lots of stuff. Lots, I think we're doing great. We'll get a newsletter out this week. So this is my annual, the next thing on our agenda is the upcoming boosters, board of education meeting, PTO. But the most important thing that I um, have on here is um, 521 is graduation day. Um, there will be four of us, I think, in attendance at graduation. So Mr. Hong is trying to do his seating arrangement. And so I'm going to ask the question that I ask um, of the board every year. How many of you would like to help hand out the forms? Oh. Mark will? <laughs> So Mark, if you can stay here. Oh come on, Mark. Was he part of one? Ron, do you want to be part of one? I'm not. No, thank you. <laughs> so Mr. Mr. <laughs> I was going to ask my part. Was <laughs> Mr. Mr. Fowler will sit where he always sits. Oh, um, well, I like that chair. He likes that chair. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> so do you want to? Well, I'll skip the alpha people. <laughs> I'm not. I just think it's a high roller. Okay. Let's have okay. the president and vice president. Yeah. Since you guys are the officers. Yeah. yeah. Well, you just have to track the building first. Of that. <laughs> so we'll split the alphabet. Um, I just want the park to stop park in it. Okay. And so usually we sit where Mr. Um, over there by Stars. the Starsfield guy. If you could do that. Thank you. Okay. Um, and Stacy and I'll decide what the dress agenda is. That's Sam, is the doors okay for us? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, I'd like to point out that on May 26th, any of you that can be here, um, staff celebration day is, is 8 a.m. And then uh, we have our next board of education meeting. Well, it's coming up Wednesday night, um, but regular one is scheduled on the 12th. Mr. Sestito, do you have any questions or concerns? No. Hmm. Is there anything that you would like explained or you would like to provide your input into for us? No. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I believe you should request from the treasurer a copy of the chart, the, yeah. the graphs from our five year fiscal forecast. Yeah, I'll yeah, I'll and <laughs> not really, it's not really exciting. And you're here for what requirement? Um, the communication. Communication air badge. This would also serve you well for the citizenship merit badges as well. Oh, I remember. Okay. <laughs> 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 and it's my so you're right. There you. It's my understanding, Mr. Cecito, that you are one of the first of many that are going to be coming. I understand. Uh, uh, the I know you. Okay. There are about four, I think, four or five other kids doing this. And then there's new scouts, so they'll be coming later on. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you being here. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, could I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. And a second, please. Second. Thank you. And seven thirty-eight. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Fowler. Uh, yes. Ms. Parker. Yes. Mr. DeSavo. Yes. Mr. Mellis. Yes. Mr. Chapman. Yes. And please let me know if you want me to pick up.